Hey, what's up, everybody? We are on for another Thursday night paint night. So looks like we got Michael Jarvis Swampy in the house. We got Chris. We got Tater here. Georgia, South Mississippi. We got Tater from where oh, I said Tater. There we go. From Texas. Pennsylvania, Albuquerque, Rudy, what's up, man? All right. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, how I got this image. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll produce this image and airbrush it onto there. But we're going to use this as a stencil. So I'm going to let a couple more people jump on. What's up, Chris? -o? Josh from Kentucky. We got Juan from Texas. Is that what you said? I don't know. I'm just saying stuff. Chris. Chris. Let's say Chris O. Oh, no, no. I think there's another Chris on there. All right, guys. Um, real quick, we're going to talk about how I, I was able to generate this skull image. Um, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about maybe why we would want to do this rather than just uh, maybe just Googling a certain skull and, and copying off that, which usually that's pretty much the norm um if you look at the first page of google if you just if you just search skull stencil or something like that you're gonna see um that those have been produced a lot you know you've done a lot of the same a lot of the same skulls have been done before um but now since uh the new ai is out we're gonna kind of dive into that and see um how i got this image like i was saying so real quick um let me go in here and get into the app okay so I'm on an iPhone here. There is an AI app, um, which looks like that. AI art. We're going to open that up. And then it kind of gives you some uh, different filters here and whatnot. But uh, real quick, we're just going to go to the generate. We're going to type in, you know, whatever we're looking for. So maybe we'll just type in uh, skull. Let's just type in skull stencil because that'll kind of give us maybe maybe a harder line and harder edge, more more cut out, maybe something like this. Um, and this is exactly how I ended up getting this image. You can uh, change the selected style here. I felt like if I went with a pencil sketch, I'd, it's going to have better shading that I can reference off of. So I figured that the pencil sketch would be the best way to go. But maybe we'll try one more um, before we, we move on. But let's go ahead and hit the pencil sketch there. And we have skull stencil, like I said, put up in there. We're going to go ahead and generate this image. Put it down. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So there's the first one it generated, which looks, you know, pretty familiar. It looks kind of like this one. It's missing this one, missing the jaw. Um, but definitely, you know, it's a different image. But let's go ahead and regenerate and see what else we come up with. Bam, so there's another one. Um, so if you want to share this, you can share it, you can save it. Uh, basically, it's you can name it, um, do whatever. But uh, the nice thing about this is you know it's... Um, yeah, I mean, it's not maybe your artwork, but at least you're not pulling it off the first page of, of Google. And if you don't like that particular skull right there, you just regenerate it, you know, and see what else we come up with. Yep, there's another one. See, that one's great too. Um, definitely could make that into a stencil. All of these can be done like that. Uh, so you go ahead and save that if you want to save that. We'll X out. Maybe we'll try one more different style. Maybe we'll go with realistic. Okay. What the hell is that? What the hell? Look at that thing. Oh, are we saving that? No, we're going to regenerate that. Let's do one more on that. What was that? Okay, it looks like it's kind of doing a lot of the day of the adult, the day of the dead kind of stuff. But 
that does not look realistic to me. Does that does that look realistic to you? No. Okay. Well, yeah, that looks good. Maybe we'll do uh maybe we'll do painting. Let's just do one more. Yeah, that looks oddly the same as the rest, but you can see that all of them are a little bit different in their own way. So if you're wanting somebody, a customer's coming to you, says, okay, I don't, I want a skull. It's not like anybody else's skull, you know, but you can, you maybe go ahead and uh, look up a few of these, save a few, send them to your customer and say, Hey, I was thinking of, you know, maybe something like this. Um, or maybe you can like collage them up, maybe do three skulls, you know, however, um, but this is definitely a useful tool. I feel like if I had this around um, back when I was doing flames and skulls like crazy, I would use this tool all the time to find uh, references. And knowing that you're not going to have the same skull as somebody else, um, I feel like is pretty cool. Okay, well, enough of that. All right, so uh, what I did is I saved that to my phone, printed it out on eight and a half by 11 right here. And then um, look at that, it didn't even put the pencil in there for me when it did the AI just to show it was a pencil drawing. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this out. We're gonna go ahead and use this for a stencil to lay out right on top of here. Um, and then uh, I think I was thinking we're probably gonna do some uh, some barbed wire with some tape uh, maybe show you some a couple little tricks with that but uh, let's go ahead and put this off to the side we will grab our cutting mat and we got our lime line blade there usually what i like to do um, is when I start is I like to cut out the outside edges. So basically the form of the skull. The nice thing is, is this doesn't need to be like real smooth. If you're like shaky, the skulls are perfect for you to cut out because like they're not really straight lines anywhere. So it doesn't have the top of the skull. Ooh. It doesn't have the top of the skull. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and cut it in. Meet it with this side over here. Definitely make those little jagged cuts here and there that it makes it look more realistic than like, see how that kind of dips in? I'll show you real quick. See, like, just little things, like how that kind of dips in. If you were just to go straight over that, like all this, and not catch all that, um, all the edges, the ups and the ups and downs, um, it's not going to look as good. You're gonna you're gonna lose the realism of it. So, pay attention to that. Unless that's what you're going for. I mean, it could be a simpler look, but having uh, these cuts that go in and out, that's what uh, it's gonna make this look. A little more real. All right, get rid of that. Now, now we're at this point, we're going to want to cut out um, all of our dark areas because uh, basically we're going to be, um, putting a little bit of white, like washing it over with a little bit of white, and then, uh, we'll be airbrushing in our dark areas. So that's where we'll kind of get all of the details and, um, the, uh, all the spacing, right. And everything. So these right here, these soft edges, I'm going to go ahead and just cut those out. I'm just going to cut this whole eye socket out. You could cut just a sliver around all this 
and then shade that in. Um, a couple of different ways to do it. Definitely the way I'm, there's, like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can, you can do it my way. I, sometimes I do it a different way every time. But like I said, we can just get rid of that for now. Keep in mind that these edges right here are going to be smooth because that, that um, bone kind of wraps up and around. So, you you know, having that all choppy, you can see how smooth that is. That's the, kind of the way you want to keep that. Just cut out little sections here and there. So it looks like we've got the, the eyes and the nose. We'll go ahead and just cut a sliver out right here. So we wouldn't want to cut all this black area out here because then we're missing the outside of the skull. It'll end up making it really skinny. So what we're doing here is just we're going to cut out a sliver. Maybe that little chunk out of the bone right there. And just come off of the side of it and just, just take a little bit out. That way we know where that cheekbone, that's the top part, and it kind of dips under and all that shadowed underneath there. Someone has a question. They said, um, my question is about Limeline Clear Coat. Can I use the Limeline Metal Flake packets with this, or should I use something else? You can. You can use the, um, when you say clear coat, it's actually Limeline uh, clear base coat. So it's not like a two-part top coat, clear coat. Um, you can use it with clear base coat, or any inner coat clear, for that matter. Um, but just keep in mind that the uh, flake is going to lay out a little more textured and a little more rough. And it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to take you more clear coat to, uh, to build up, to get that to smooth out. Um, when you're using a, a clear coat and you're mixing the flakes straight in the clear coat, it's staying wet longer, which is allowing it to lay flatter, which is a, it's a benefit for sure, because it doesn't take as much material to, uh, to build up over that, to make it flat. Um, however, you do risk run more runs in your clear coat and your uh, flake when using regular clear coat because it takes longer to dry. Uh, so there's there's some downfalls of it too. But you just got to be careful. But both ways work. Second part of that question says, and is the lime line clear for coverage over the metal flake coats? No. No, that you would definitely want to use the uh, regular clear coat over the top. Um, of that. That's why it's just better just to stick with the clear coat all the way through. So you mix your clear, clear coat, part A, part B, you mix the, the metal flake in with it, and you start spraying it with the metal flake until it's covered. And then you just go straight to the, um, the, the clear coat with no metal flake in it. So you're using the same product, the same clear coat all the way through, rather than um, trying to build it up with clear base coat, which clear base coat is not meant to really build up. Um, it's just, it's really meant to just transfer, you know, transfer paint and pigment.
Then someone said, do you just use specific paper, printer paper for this? Yeah, just the regular, just, just whatever you have. You can use the thicker paper and um, like it's a different, you can get a different weight. Uh, and I used to use a thicker weight, but um, I like the thinner stuff actually. It cuts a little cleaner, but if you want to save your stencil, um, get a thicker paper. You could save it and use it multiple times. Someone said, how about a gold leaf leaf tooth? <laughs> That's a great idea. Huh. If we have time, I'm going to do that. <sighs> then someone said, have you ever used glow-in-the-dark powder for a clear base? And if so, what's the best? Um, I have not used the glow-in-the-dark. I've seen it. The reason why I really haven't, because that only lasts for so long. If you're using it indoors you know then maybe that's fine but most of the stuff that we do is automotive expose the elements and um it'll break down that pigment will break down and it won't be glow in the dark for very long i wish that was the case though and then someone said couldn't you use your cricut machine to cut a stencil yeah, yeah. you could i mean um nah, it, it's not going to follow this one very good and if that would be a different method because you know this paper is not sticky and we're going to be reusing this uh multiple times like over the top to resharpen um the image and you really can't do that when you're using vinyl so yeah i feel like for this project or for any um airbrush project that's not like a logo then i would use a paper stencil Someone, so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Someone's asking if you can get the crushed, crushed glass through the Canada Amazon. Uh, yeah, you should be able to. They said they can only find it through a second-hand distributor. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Um, yeah, the best place in Canada, if you're in Canada, to order is the limelinebigcartel.com. yeah it's not that long but yeah you're right i mean with amazon it is quick um i'm not sure why you should the fba should be fulfilling that uh maybe i should look into that a little more then someone said they want to see the aluminum stamped foil process again live and then to follow up on that limeline clear coat, he just said, okay, so limeline clear can be used for mixing candy and concentrate. Exactly. You can use clear base coat for, yeah, you can use it for a number of things, but that's mainly what it's used for is mixing con can candy concentrates. Um, you could also like black base coat, you can take clear base coat and thin it down and make it more transparent. So like if you're wanting drop shadows to be really subtle, then you could uh, put some clear base coat in there and reduce it and make it less potent. Um, it also carries the um, pigments, the powdered pigments, um, any kind of a pearl. Um, so you like you can lay down a white base coat and then lay down a clear base coat with a white pearl over the top and it gives it kind of like a that, that diamond pearl look. It's another good use for it. Some people use it to kind of clear in between their artwork. I've heard it used for that. I don't use it for that. I prefer if I'm going to clear in between artwork, I want to use regular clear coat, build it up, let it dry, come in the next day, sand it down with 600 grit. That way it's actually chemically hardened because you're using part A and part B of a top coat that takes a minute to dry, but you're using that and it's creating um, a thickness you know base coats not meant to build up if you think you're going to get rid of paint edges with clear base coat you might be able to but it's not the best way to go about it you're just going to add a lot of uncatalyzed base coat material that um, is subject to like stuff happening to it you know what i mean like it's just better to go with a two-part over the top to to uh kind of seal everything up and if you want to do another layer you 600 grit or 800 grit and um, just start painting again right over top.
I'm just working out the middle of these teeth right here. What I'm trying to do is keep everything together. Like I don't want to cut a tooth out. Like if I was to cut all the way around that tooth, I'm just going to have a missing tooth, which is fine in this. I mean, he could have a missing tooth, but I kind of want to keep it all together and look exactly like it's supposed to look. Someone said it would be cool for you to um, do a classic car roof. Yeah, I would love to do that. And then someone said they use mylar to cut stencils because they were taught that you could clean them with solvents and reuse them. Yeah, you could do that. I just feel like they don't cut as clean as paper. I feel like they can, the edges just don't. Yeah. But they, it, it all, yeah, that all works too. They're asking if you can use a stencil cutter. Why oh, like a burner? I don't know. It said, would it be easier to buy a vinyl cutter or a creek cutter to make the stencil? Uh, not, not really. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's probably maybe easier ways if you, but we're talking like if you were to put this in the cricket, like we talked about the other live or a week ago or something, we, we did talk about the cricket a little bit and how I was able to create a stencil out of that. That was a pretty easy the, I think that one was a pretty easy stencil. It's pretty hard lined. This one, it would have a hard time finding um, the areas you need to cut out. So, and like, once again, you could reuse this. Like, really, you could. So I'm not too worried about it. And it hasn't taken me too long and I'm almost done um, to do this. I prefer just to cut them out. You know, if you can't, can't take 20, 25 minutes to cut it out, you know, and then another 30 minutes to paint it. Seems about right. Are your powder base coats durable as your ready paint base coats under UV conditions? Yeah, they are. Um, they're made for automotive use. Um, but like any base coat, you're going to want to top coat it with a clear coat. dollar super chat oh hell yeah thanks man appreciate that just kind of cutting out this crack in the cheek getting this little more detail done uh, looks like i can maybe cut out the space between that tooth right there maybe another little one right there i don't you don't need to get every little area like i was saying just need to get enough where it, you know where stuff st starts and stops Someone says, I've seen you lay stencils over the last few lives without sticking them down and you still maintain sharp lines. Is there a technique to this or just low pressure on your airbrush? Um, well, you know, they're not super sharp and really you don't want them. There's some there's some lines you do want really sharp and there's others that you don't. Um, so I just kind of pay attention to what needs to stay sharp and then um, make sure that there's enough contrast um, between, um, the, the line, that's pretty much like you can lose a lot of detail by losing contrast. And that's what we'll, we'll kind of learn a little bit about that when we paint this as well. But, you know, you want to make sure you keep this really bright and that's going to be really dark. If this is a light gray or a darker gray, you're going to lose that whole side of the nose right there. So I think a lot of this is about contrast, um, make sure you're staying bright on your edges and not, um, over painting and making it and shading too fast, going too fast, too dark. Too dark, too fast. <laughs> and I like to flip it over and see. I'm like, oh yeah, that's looking good. There's something right here so we can, it's not as bright, but go ahead and put something in there. This little sliver right there, right by the nose is pretty important. That's going to what's going to make that look like that's popping out. Like once again, I don't want to cut out all of this black area. I'm just cutting out the edge of it. And then I know I got to shade this way. Same thing right here. See how it's super bright right there. 
I'm just going to cut just a little slit right there, just so I know that that's there. Same thing right here. This one will actually just cut that and leave that loose. See how that worked right there? So that way we were able to, to drop that shadow up in there. That one worked good there. Let's go ahead and cut this out. Isaac just sent you a $10 super chat. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, Isaac. I appreciate that, guys. Yeah, I hope this is helping y'all out. You guys have any questions, let me know. It could be about anything. It could be about, like I said, I've been custom painting for uh, about 20 years now. Um, had my own shop, had my own shop, had different shops, different places, you know, close to out of business a few times. It's just hard and but it's getting easier. You know, it's just, I feel like with social media and stuff like that, there's uh, a lot more jobs out there than there used to be. Let's take a look at this. All right. Someone said, I sent Adam my old Ford roof right before the live. Then someone said it, said it in the chat. It's crazy how stuff just lines up. Left out loud. Yeah. They said the paint that you should paint the old, an old car hood. An old car hood. Oh yeah. Yeah. He did. Uh, I did see a picture of that. And then uh, someone said, I seriously appreciate everything that you share. If you ever have a chance, can you go through the mechanics of different types of spray rigs and equipment? Yeah, that would be a great video. Um, yeah, that would be a good video. Yeah, I should, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually working on a full course. Um, I kind of do it here and there. Uh, but that will definitely have all that all that equipment uh, knowledge it's kind of it's not very fun to learn but you know, good to know. But it's good to know and you kind of need to know it unless you're going to guess and guessing gets you nowhere okay that all looks good we're gonna go with that we could do more cracks in the you know we could always just cut something out in there make it a little better um but this is gonna be good enough for what we're gonna do Yeah, I think I might. We'll see how much time we have at the end. And we'll go ahead and do that. Maybe. I'm not gonna no promises. That's a big skull. I wasn't I was actually when I was first doing this and I was kinda running out of time, I was gonna do a skull this big. But then I couldn't get the printer to work and I was it just printed this out. I was like, all right, whatever. Um, so I'm gonna do like a uh, a fiery kind of background on this. Um you know, maybe we'll even put it down here a little bit. So we have, so we ha can have a little bit of a taper off. Maybe even like, shoot, I'd be good with him and getting rid of that whole bottom jaw, but. Okay, we're not going to. We're just going to go ahead and paint it since I've cut it. But we'll line it up and get rid of a little bit. But now I look at it, this, this would be a great skull if we just got rid of the bottom there. It's less goofy, but whatever. We're going to do the whole thing. All right. Got a El Chipo Iwata Neo. It's cheap, but still good. So, I mean, you could go with an Eclipse or something like that, especially for this. It could, you could use that, but uh, this will definitely work for what we're doing. And if you're new to it, this is all you need. I think it's 75 bucks. Oh, okay. So I'm using a Iwata Studio compressor and I'm running it. It depends on what I'm doing, but I run usually around 18 pounds of pressure, sometimes lower if I'm doing more detail. Higher pressures most of the time when I first start, then I start um, uh, lowering the pressure, thinning out the paint as I go. But really, I could do this at all at one pressure too. It can all be done. It's, there's no There's no magic pressure. There's no magic airbrush. You can do it many different ways. You can do it all the way up, or you can do it really slow, really fast, you know. Someone said, save time and ditch the job. Then I'll give you time to do the tooth, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, but then I feel like the tooth will be less impactful, right? Huh. 
Yeah, we'll see. No, that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna do. It. If we have time for the tooth, we're gonna do it. Okay, so I have some black base coat and some white base coat, and I have a couple of extra balls here that I'll make two shades of gray. I'll make a light gray, and I'll make a dark gray. You could actually make a couple more shades if you wanted to. Um, airbrush those in as well. Probably can get more detail doing it that way, but. Uh, for this, we're just going to mix the two shades plus the um, the white and the black. We may darken up the shades or lighten them up a little bit as we go, but nothing uh, set in stone here. Uh, I don't even know how to say this name, and I might botch it totally. But Gr Gerwai <laughs> sent you a ten dollars super chat. Oh yeah, right on, dude. I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> we got some black. So, like I said, we're going to mix the white and the black just a little bit. The reason why we don't want to just do white and black on this, because you could literally just do it in white, shade with black. The problem is you once you go black, you can't go back. You can't go darker than black. And sometimes you just want to go darker. You know? So, and if you're already at black, how are you going to go darker in black? That's why you want to always um, airbrush in grays. Same thing with white. Um, once you go too black, you can't go too white. So it's like, uh, let's see, how, see, that's not too, that could be a little whiter, but we'll go with that. What do we got there? Some they black. want to know what my German beer is of the night. Okay, you're going to have to show it here because I'm mixing paint. Oh, okay. And guess what, Larry? This is my last beer. The countdown calendar. This is it. This is the last one. It's not as good as last week's. That one was definitely better. Hmm. But this is nice and cold. Seems a little bit. <laughs> it's not as, the last time was a little bit, like I said, has fruit to it. Pretty taste. All right, so gray base coat right here, light gray. Um, we'll see what this looks like. Let's put a cap on it. Somebody said, um, where'd oh, you yeah. get the hood? Uh, hoods are Limeline. So you can search Limeline on Amazon or you can look down in the description if you're on YouTube. There'll be an Amazon link right there that has those, those hoods there. Okay, so you can see the difference in the sh oh, here. The cap will show it the best. Light gray, dark gray. So we're going to work back and forth with these two on this. Not going black, not going white. We're going to save those for later. But we're just going to go back and forth with these. You could do um, a couple more shades in between these. Like a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, and then this light. And you could work all four of those. You can work back and forth with you know, all four of those to... To get texture and detail and then um you can you know lightly if you want use the black and the white at the very end someone asked you how much reducer do you use for straight base coat uh usually it's one to one but it all depends it's uh it's it's more than one to one if you're if you're airbrushing because remember if you're if you're spraying through just a little airbrush the paint's going to need to be thinner than if you're spraying through a big gun so it'd be more like one and a half to one. So with this, so I did put, a, like I said, I, like we talked about, we did put a reducer in here to, to thin it out. And that's all the urethane reducer does, is just thins it out and makes it sprayable. It's nothing that's really measured too much, like in a cup. It's better that you just kind of know. It's like you, you can kind of tell if it's thin enough or not. But that looks about right. And if we're going to put it in our airbrush, and if it doesn't spray right, then we'll we'll thin it out or we'll thicken it up as, as we need it. Someone says they have a Badger uh, 150. They want to know if you think that's a good airbrush. Yeah, um, I don't know much about that model, but you should be fine with the Badger for sure. Okay, we got that all in the airbrush ready to go. First thing I want to do is um, I did want to kind of put some bob wire here. We're going to do a really quick tape out. 
about the reducer for Hussein, so about 75% for the reducer in the in the regular base coat? Yeah, I would say that, but it kind of depends on your base coat. Like, is your base coat like three months old where it's starting to thicken up a little bit? You know, it's like all kind of depends. But that I would start one to one and then reduce out more if you need to. Okay. I'm going to take some 16th inch lime line and maybe just start right there. And what I'm going to do, I've never done this before. I'm actually just making this up as I go. Um, just going to kind of wave these in and out like bob wire usually would, I guess. Somebody said, I'm doing an at-home special rattle can paint on paint job on my tank and laid a decal I made on my Cricut. Just sprayed my first coat of the primer color and just wanted to know when should I pull it off? How many coats is good before the clear? Did you say spray paint? <laughs> yes. Uh, um, so rattle can, special at home special rattle can paint. Yeah, so sometimes you gotta be careful with the rattle can paints because they have clear coat in them, and if you're trying to do graphics that have clear coat, um, you could have some problems with that. Uh, you know, I don't know. I can't answer that question because I really, I really don't use uh, rattle cans, and it, and you're you're probably gonna be fine. I mean, just expect that you're going to get a probably a rattle can finish so i'm not sure on the dry times on that just make sure it's dry i guess that'd be my best my best answer to that and then okay. so, somebody asked do you ever use a gravity feed airbrush yeah that's all i use all right so i kind of just did those two um 16th inch lines and what I'm gonna do here is every so often, like I said, hopefully this looks right. I've never really, maybe we'll go, we'll cut here. And we'll cut this. Be like razor wire. Oh yeah, okay. Do one right here. Let's see this way. Yeah, it's just going to be kind of a silhouette kind of look. Um, yeah, I'm going to be able to look all right. There's a couple of different ways you could do this. You could cut out a uh, stencil for this, like um, cut out like the little round looking uh, bob wire. This is more like a razor wire. Someone said, I need your help to learn how to bid paint jobs for multiple cars. Approximately how much would you charge per car if the owner is supplying all materials and the booth? Mm. Yeah, um, I'm probably the wrong one to ask for that, too, because I really don't paint cars all that much. Um, best way of going about that would be... Maybe, maybe talk to them and say if something went wrong, you know, say like uh, there was a problem where maybe the paint burnt up or something. Maybe discuss with them who would be, you know, if something goes wrong, who's going to buy the materials again? You know, because I would hate to see you um, get into something where something went wrong and then you got to be responsible for the replacement materials plus the time. Um, so I definitely would have that talk with them. Cause you never know what could happen, especially when they're supplying their own materials. Have you used these materials before? Um, 
that would be the other thing. You're probably better off buying your own materials too. Maybe someone on here who has paint parts can chime in and see yeah. the average what they yeah, I don't know what it would cost. Like, I mean, it's a. It depends on. Are you doing body work? Are you? How much you got to mask off? How big is the car? What color? Design. Yeah, the metal. Is it metallic? Do you are you gonna cut and polish these? Um, you gotta prep anything. Um, what's his expectations? Like, what is he expecting out of this? Is he wanting a showroom finish? Is he wanting something that's just because this? You know, like. He don't really care. He just wants it a uh, better, you know, or maybe he wants it a different color. That's going to be a lot more work. If you're changing a car color to black that was white, you're going to have all those door jams that are white, which that would wouldn't be fun, you know. Okay, that looks all right. I'm not like uh, I'm not like totally in love with that, but it'll look good because it's just going to be a silhouette. So I think all in all, um, it was just an idea. Someone said, what grit of paper should I use to sand before clear? All right. Sorry. Let me reread that. What grit paper should I use to sand before clear, wet, or dry? Um, you can use uh, 600 is what I use. If you have like artwork and you're worried about burning through, you may be 800 or even 1,000 grit. All right. So I'm going to line this up about where I want it, maybe down here a little bit. That way I can kind of, like I said, have a little bit of the flame smoke coming off of that. All right, so I got the uh, light gray and I'm just gonna kind of just dust a little bit around here and there. That way I can kind of register the stencil and voila, we're done. That's it. All right. Time to clear? Yep. That's it. <laughs> you said we're done. Yeah. I mean, it uh, depends on what your customer wants. Is this expect expectations like this? You know, is that, hey, that's badass, dude. I mean, you could you could hit that a little harder. Okay, I just barely um, just dusted that in there because I didn't want to get all crazy with the white, especially when it's so dark up in here. Um, but I am going to, I just kind of registered that stencil. What I'm going to do is, um, first I'm going to kind of go over my, uh, what looks to be razor wire right here. Follow that line. Someone said, uh, do both your clear coats that you offer in your store give the same finish? Um, there's only one clue. There's no clear coat. Okay, if it's in my if it's in my store, it's probably not lime line. It's uh there's the finish the finish line. Um yeah, no, they don't. They don't. The uh the U pole is uh, has more risk of running um and uh, other stuff like that. But I think the I'm trying to remember that that line. I think it's finish line. It's red. Yeah, I don't know. We talked about it. I think we talked about it just last week. Yeah. I'll grab me a rack here. The static on these are crazy. That's what's pulling all that overspray is just sucking it right to that board. So just by wiping it off takes care of it. All right. So I kind of just highlighted around um, the backdrop of those. And what we'll do is just we're just going to go in there and this is where um oh man what's <laughs> always happened <laughs> the hell? all right that one we're just going to get rid of right there oh nice. no it's okay but right off the bat you know is what the hell yeah or your new one? no it's my new one we're okay What I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of blend this in, kind of, you know, nothing serious. We're just kind of making texture, making it white. Man, I need a dryer sheet. I'm just going to suggest that. Really? Yeah. Or there's 
Well, I don't know. Static guard spray? That probably wouldn't. No, we don't want to spray anything. Nah. We're going to build like this off, though. <laughs> Someone said bull hole. <laughs> All right, we're just creating texture. Like I said, we're just kind of just like nothing serious. Someone said. When he says 600 to 800 grit, what step is that? Not on the final clear coat before polish, right? No, no, no. No, you're going to want to use, uh, you know, 2000 grit would probably be, be a lot better. That's kind of what's been happening lately. Someone said the skull looks like it has horns with that little. Uh, yeah, let me spray something on here because um, that's, I think it's really the rag that's putting all the static on there. Well, it's the, the skull makes it. It looks like it does have horns with the the built-in. I don't know. This. What are you talking about? This makes it look like oh, it has yeah. skulls. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, I, I can see say it too. that someone else did, but I can see it. <laughs> I can see it now too. Okay, maybe that takes care of some of our static problem. I don't know. Rubbing this rag on there is probably not helping, I think. All right, I'm gonna come in here and we're just gonna hit our really light spots. Should drip on there again. Keep hitting this because we want that, that top of that skull to be really bright. Someone asked, do you use a specific temperature light bulb in your booth? Uh, no, I really don't worry about it. You really don't need all that when you're not, unless you're paint matching, like with collision repair. When it comes to custom paints, you're just, do, you're just doing whatever color you're wanting to use, you know. So that, that really has not been a necessity for me. That would not be what I would spend my money on. All right. Yeah, basically, I'm just kind of blocking this in, adding the white. And then we'll come in with some gray. All right. Does that look good? <laughs> that looks not good. All right. We're going to make it look better, though. Can't even tell what it is, huh? I know it's scary because they're like, uh, is this ever gonna turn out? It's a blob. We'll give it a we'll do it a favor right here. Okay. Dark gray. Same same airbrush. Same static problem. I wonder if that would work. You think that would work? Maybe. It'd be worth trying, I think. You want me to go get one? Sure. All right. Hold on the questions. I'll be back. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, re kind of reline this thing up. If I can, it doesn't really matter. That's kind of all over the place. So stick it right there. As you can see, I'm just kind of hitting the edges, letting letting it blend in into the center of that socket because we're not wanting to just fill this all the way in because there's other stuff going on in there. So we're just going to kind of wisp it through here. Maybe some through there. There we go. Same thing here.
once again, just kind of wisp it in through here, make it a little bit of the background in there. Maybe just lightly kind of come back a little farther and just let that, that kind of brush over the whole area. Same thing with that nose, maybe darken that up a little more. Come up through here. Go in here and get these teeth. You don't, like I, I'm just kind of, I'm still not like filling everything in. Kind of trying to stay on the paper and create uh, lights and darks. So that's why it just doesn't look so stenciled. Hit this outer edge there. Ready to take a peek? Oh yeah, that's better. Let's go ahead and um, I notice I kind of missed this cheek right here. I think on both sides. Oh yeah, dryer sheet, okay. Oh. Ooh, it smells good. <laughs> kind of cleans up the overspray a little bit, too. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to have some kind of gnarly reaction watch. <laughs> okay. So now with the same, I've kind of um, just went over the outline of all that. Um, the same shade the same uh, dark gray. I'm just going to kind of come in here and just lightly shade this. This where it's darker, like remember right here. We're going to come up that way. We're going to shade that a little darker. This is all shaded dark here. One thing you do want to remember is this edge right here, you don't, you want to try to keep that clean. You also want, you want to try to kind of keep all of your edges clean because if you were just to spray that and shadow all of that area, you're going to lose all your detail like right there. You're going to lose the dimension and the 3D look. So try really hard to like, you know, even keep the last little tiny sliver of that edge clean. Someone asked, which clear would you recommend, finish line or you pull for beginner? I would do the finish line. And then they said, maybe the skull needs an eye patch. <laughs> and then someone said, what? We fixed that problem already. <laughs> but hey, the night's not over. <laughs> then someone said, what do you use to clean the airbrush in between colors? Uh, just use a little bit of lacquer thinner or you can use urethane reducer. And then how long have you been airbrushing? I've been airbrushing for about 20 years. And then what PSI are you using? Same pressure I was using before, about 18. And then someone said, rub your rag with the dryer sheet also. That might help. Ooh, good idea. And <laughs> someone said, are those you are those used fabric sheets? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had them in my pocket as I was running through the snow, trying not to fall on my oh. ass. <laughs> and then someone said, sheets are now on, on my list now. <laughs> <laughs> Check the Amazon link below for your dryer sheets. Downy. Mm -hmm. 
you see i'm just kind of um i'm following direction here like usually like see how the lines kind of go up and down um where the skull would be that's kind of the way you want to shade on this tarp type of the uh on the crown of the skull you're going to want to go this way like we'll do that here in a minute but as you can see i'm just trying to follow the direction of what would uh you know how the grain would go i guess i don't know that's the best way i can explain it and really i'm just doing kind of little dagger strokes just lines creating texture and shading i'm not trying to follow every line just trying to connect a little bit of this together I'm going close. I'm kind of going far away sometimes. Like really close would create more of that detail. We're not really trying to create too much detail right now. We're trying to get the shading in there and get the dimension going. And then we're able to, you know, get a little sharper and get in there and get some of that detail. If you do that too early, it's like you try to like detail a whole area out right here and leave in this plane. That works. It just hasn't really worked for me. Like I've always kind of run around the whole piece get it um closer and then i kind of identify what needs more uh detail so like right here i'm kind of doing like a you know just upside down u and arch right there trying to make this look round so if you were to go this way up and down you can see that's just not it's not going to look right. You could probably go up and down right here, but really you're, you're wanting to, to roll everything around. Someone asked when they, you were, I think it's when you were talking about all you clean your airbrush with, they oh, said, yeah. can you use paint thinner? Is paint thinner? Yeah. Mine you use too? Yeah. And they said, line line dryer sheets coming soon. <laughs> the green. <laughs> Someone said, I can't wait for Lime Mine Magic Airbrush to come out. And someone said, yeah, they love the mini hoods. They painted a checker flag on one recently. It looked cool. Yeah, I think I may have saw it. It was really good. That's the one that I saw. Someone said, so does rubbing a new unused dryer sheet on your artwork not leave any kind of residue behind no nah, not so far it did look fine you if this was a metal hood you wouldn't have that problem it's just by that the static from the that uh microfiber rag i'm pretty sure I, I wonder if there's a did you say there's a spray yeah i use it for my hair oh yeah but it's just, it sprays on and stays on right it's not spray out and wash out right well i think no it's yeah it's just yeah definitely not use that it's just like in an aerosol can called static guard. But in the winter, when my, when my hair gets staticky, I used to use the dryer sheet. I use that. But it like, it smells funky. So I think it probably has a lot of chemicals in it that would maybe mess up. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, you, on, on people's cars, you're really not going to have to. This is a practice piece. And it's plastic, so. We haven't had much of a problem since we rubbed that on there, though. So, but. I'm also spraying a lot closer. Not as much overspray. I'm going to come in here and shade. Shade this outer part like we talked about. Kind of create the top of the eyebrows, I guess. I don't know. Do skulls have eyebrows? <laughs> no, but they probably, no, but he looks like he has wrinkles, like he might need. <laughs> no. He's tough, so maybe. Someone said I have a static gun. Remove static. Yeah, yeah, yep. Really? That's yeah, good? I've seen those a lot lately, actually. Yeah, they use it. Keeps your, you're supposed to keep your uh, jobs clean. 
for removing the. I need that for my hair. Oh yeah, I think they're really expensive though. Hmm. I think they're into the thousands. Yeah, I kind of when I spread that static guard on my hair. All right, I think we've just about got this. Let's shade that a little more there, a little more there. All right. We don't want to go too far because we want to go back with some white. The light gray, I mean. That sounds cool. Okay, light gray. So we're going to go back to the original color we had here. I'm going to add just maybe a little bit more reducer to this just to thin it out a little more. All right, let's see how this is spraying. Get an idea how this sprays. Okay, that's looking good. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I'm going to come in here and just, so this is a highlight color, highlight shade. Um, so I'm going to come in here to the teeth and I'm going to kind of hit that and create more texture. Um, you'll see I'll come up into here where the bright spots are, like at the tip of the nose, um, lighten all that up. Um, I'm not too worried about um, like getting a little bit of overspray into my darks because I'll come back and re-register that again. So I want to make sure on some of these I do get a little bit of overspray because I want those edges to be super white. Like right here, uh, I want this to be really light. So when I come back and register that, it looks like the sun or the whatever the light source is coming down. It's kind of just bouncing off the top of that. Could even do an up in here, back up in there. But uh, really, we're just going to hit our our lightest and the brightest. Highlight these teeth, put a little bit of texture up in there. Just wherever you think that the light would bounce off of and hit because it's a little bit raised, you know, just like each one of these little, uh, his lips. Does the skull have lips? No lips either, huh? Well, he has gums, I guess. No gums either? Mm. How's his teeth stay in? They don't. What do you mean they tell all he has teeth? They don't have gums. Gums is a tissue. Well, explain to me why their teeth stay in then. Because it's connected to the bone, the jawline. Where's your little, where's your little plastic teeth thingy go you used to have? I can show you. Where is that thing? I don't have it anymore. It's creepy anyway. Probably why I got rid of it. You see, I'm just kind of bouncing around. I really want to stay kind of more in the middle of things and, you know, wherever the bright spots are. Someone said, wipe your cap. Lincoln? About ready to. Whoa. Make sure you hit that really bright. See, I am kind of losing that line. I'm fine with that. You know, that's going to kind of blur out your line. It's going to look a little worse than it did, but that's all right because we know we're going to re-register that. We'll clean that line back up. It's just really important we have that, um, the contrast there. If, if you don't have contrast, you really, you don't have much, especially when we're going to be laying a candy over the top of this. Um, we're going to lose some of that detail and some of that contrast anyway, so we're wanna, we want to overcompensate a little bit for that. If this was staying uh, black and gray, then uh, yeah, I could see maybe not going so crazy on the contrast, but.
a little crack in the skull right there a little bit of highlight we'll come back with the dark and then make a little bit of a shadow on that too get some little brightness here as you add white you can always go back over your the same areas that you want really bright and hit them again I know I want that really bright that I really want this bottom of that I want really that to be punched out like the dark down here um, you have a little bit of flames back up into here Right here, it's gonna look a little funky for a second, but I want that to be really bright right there. So it just kind of like looks like the um, the fires kind of lighten up his the bottom of his cheek there. I do kind of want his um, skull to kind of like kind of be on like a lot on fire right here you know because kind of where it ends so i'm just going to kind of bring some lines in there it's kind of going to kind of look like smoke the fire just kind of rolling off the backdrop there same thing here we're kind of i'm kind of a smoky look right there Mostly this kind of heading up that way. Someone said, I just got some of your silver metal pigment in today and was wondering what size mesh do you recommend for straining? Um, you can use the fine. I'm not sure. I'm not really um, that educated on the mesh size, I guess. What was included in there is going to be fine. You should have a couple of filters there, but either the fine or the uh, medium should be fine as well. So I think any automotive strainer is going to, going to work. All right, we're going to go back to the gray. Dark gray, I should say. I'm going to add a little more reducer to this mixture too. Take our stencil. Someone said, "What would a eraser? What would eraser be used for shading?" Yeah, an eraser to pull back the highlights. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you, you could do that, that if this was clear. clear. If you had it, um, you probably could do it a little bit now, uh, but you're you're probably going to scratch back into the black. But if this was painted white and then clear coated, you would be able to scratch back your highlights. You, you can bring the white back by pulling the paint off, erasing it like you would like a pencil drawing or something like that. All right, that's sharpening it up pretty good. Let's go ahead and we'll... A little more right here. Fade that in just a little bit right there. I got a little crazy. I kind of want that to taper off. I don't want flames like all over this thing. A little bit of faint stuff right there. There we go. A 
come in here just a little bit. A little bit of detail. It's easy. I'm getting I'm getting a lot closer right now, and this is where I'm not going to do a whole lot of detail on this. I'm just going to kind of uh, go over it so it kind of looks pretty good. Um, but really, you could spend the time like uh, cutting all these out and uh, really adding a lot of different textures and shades to all this. One thing with the teeth, you don't really need to draw them all the way out too. Just just do enough to. Um, you know kind of make it look right you don't want to make it look too too chiseled and too perfect not everything's going to have detail either like you're going to want it to just punch out a few different spots give it the detail that you want it and then let the other kind of the rest kind of fade out that's just my method i mean you do it however you want but you can detail the whole thing out it'll look great too Shadow there, shadow there. Run a shadow, just see, I'm kind of staying away from this edge. I want this edge right here to be um, really bright too. So I'm gonna run my, my shadow line right above that. Still keeping the, the bottom of that socket right because we don't want to lose that a uh, little bit of a highlight there someone said hey adam i mean i'm still using rattle cans but can the crushed glass or the flake be used salt sick oh my heck salt shaker style uh i wouldn't recommend it i feel like it's not the right way to do it um you mean blowing it on i guess you um, it kind of depends on what you're painting, you know what I mean? And what your expectations are. But if you're going to do that, I'd probably use the metal flake rather than the glass because it's a little bit thinner. You're going to have an easier time, um, getting that to, to lay out flatter. All right, so I'm not going to shade this too much because I, I have to drop in some candies in this thing because we're going to be tinting this thing with candies, um, using some uh, dark reds up in here. So we want to keep that light enough to make those eyes kind of glow back there. Let's go ahead and maybe a little bit down here to... Like really, I could spend a lot of time in here, you know, kind of, like I said, chiseling that out and... Uh, Adding those other shades in there. Yeah, true. True that. All right, just creating a little bit of backdrop in there. Let's go ahead and uh, let me mix up our first candy here. Okay, I have some clear base coat in here. We have some candy in here. Let's see, let me grab. What color is this? Lemon yellow. What? Lemon yellow. This is one that you have to clear before the end of the live. 
Yeah. Yeah, that definitely when it comes to candies. All right, got some reducer in there. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that's good. Let's get the airbrush cleaned out. Okay, so I know a lot of people start with the darks and then move to the lights. Uh, with the fire, I like to start with the lights. And then we will um, we'll move in with the darker reds and the, uh, the oranges. Once we got the, uh, this, uh, what is this, lemon yellow? This lemon yellow applied. So we're just going to kind of tint this right here. See, we're all tinting it kind of yellow. The paint booth? No, no paint booth today. Maybe next week we should do that, huh? Yeah, we need to. All right, all right, him a reminder. Next week, paint booth. Someone Let me said, know that I clean my booth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does. Someone said, I remember you said you have some candies that maybe coming out in a few months are there any other products coming out in the future from line uh yeah, yeah. Line? yep uh yeah, clear yeah. coat yep clear coat uh 2k clear coat coming uh, out two. uh we have sandable primer coming out and we have white base coat the same white i was using here coming out you'll see that in the next couple of weeks uh the candy's still going to be a little bit still be a we're still still testing them out and now I will add in dryer sheets. Kidding, kidding, kidding. You what? Kidding. You what? I, didn't... I said, and now I'm going to add in the dryer sheets. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Joking. All right. So we got the gold applied there. Grab some orange here. Oh, look at that. I already have some orange mixed up in my one of my cups here. So orange? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's one of the colors. Doesn't the fire have blue? Yeah, but we're not gonna mess with that. Red? Yeah, it's red for sure. Almost um, like I'm gonna have to thin this out a little more. That's better. All right, I'm just gonna come in here and not hit everything, just the darker areas. Oh, we're gonna say what happened? <laughs> well, you know something I don't know. What just happened here? What's not working? All right, all right. Oh. We better? No, it went black. It did? Uh-huh. Holy crap. All right. 
the screen. There we go. I think we stayed on because mine was still connected here. We run this candy orange up over the top of that. We're gonna keep uh, kind of keep away from the center of this. Maybe just blend in a little bit, but we want to keep that pretty bright. So we're gonna leave that the gold. All this fire up here can go orange. Okay, someone says, so the, he says, this is Austin that talked to you on Instagram earlier that flaked my roof gold. Do you know what would have caused the prior candy under to bleed through my clear coat? It's got me stumped bad. Yeah, so what's happening? Say it one more time so I can listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll put it on the screen too. So okay, you can I can it. read it to you. Maybe that's better. Read it <laughs> so I can listen. We what would have caused a prior candy underneath to bleed through my clear coat. Uh, yeah, so that's candies are kind of uh, known for that. Is they're gonna bleed up through into pretty much anything that you apply on the top of it, especially if it's applied too fast. So whenever your your first couple of coats, when you're spraying a clear coat on top of candy, you want to want to make sure you stay light. Do tack coats, lighter coats, build up. Um, build up enough material there lightly that the solvents don't have enough time to disturb um, the clear coat that's on there. Cause it could, it could disturb the clear coat, penetrate through that and then re-wet your base coat, which that might be what's happening. All right. I'm just going to kind of blend in this orange as I see fit. Darken it up a little bit. Okay, then someone says, sorry to keep asking, but I want to get it right. The finish line clear would be better than the better than the lime line clear for using the lime line metal flake packs, correct? Uh, no, I would use the lime line, but it is, it's not available right the second. Um, it will be available next week. Kind of why I didn't say anything. The lime line is only going to be... Um, it's only, only going to be available in quartz as well. So if you're looking for a gallon... Um, it's not quite available yet. I may offer a, uh, a two quart discount, but um, yeah, we'll kind of see about that. But yeah, either either of those will work. I would say stay away from the U pole if you're new because it does tend to run a little more. But that also does work though. Just be more patient with it. So uh, I'm just thinking, just thinking because I'm not good at this either. So okay. you. Yeah. Is it because you have the clear coat? Um, clear base coat that maybe he's confusing with the clear coat. Yeah, so clear base coat is exactly what the, the name is. It's clear base coat. It's not a clear top coat. Um, and clear base coat is just a one part. It's not a part A and part B. It's just a clear and then you could add a, an additive or a tint or a pearl or a candy or anything to that. But would you add metal flakers? I think that's what he's wanting to spray. Okay. You can. You can add it to that, but once again, whatever you spray with that, if you mix, mix it with clear base coat, it's going to give it more of a rough texture and it's going to have to have more clear coat, regular clear coat, two part clear coat over the top anyways. So you're going to have to buy clear coat anyways, because you need that to build up thick enough to, and then to dry that you can sand it. So would he want to use the metal flake in a... Uh Coat yes. Yeah, mix the metal flake in the clear coat to spray it. Both ways work, like I said. Some ways work better, and I feel like the and I know so that the clear coat um, allows the flake to lay flatter, and also it's more durable because you're two you're two parts. You're chemically hardened all the way through all those layers. If you're just laying um, flake. In, with, you're, if you're just putting flake in clear base coat and laying it down, laying it down, it gets pretty thick. And that's just a big, thick layer to have that's not chemically hardened, if that makes sense. And I know a, new, a lot of new guys don't know what that means, but chemically hardened means it has a part A 
and a part B, it, that's always going to be better because it, it has the, the hardener with it. That's what makes it um, durable against things like fuel and it makes it more scratch resistant. It makes it polishable. You know, a lot of the, the spray cans, they're just one part. There's not two parts to them. So they don't really ever harden that hard. Not with like a two part wood. Having a two part in anything is going to be more durable. Yeah, I think he just confused. Kind of like I was at first, like, what is clear base coat and clear coat? There's actually a difference. Yeah, there's a huge difference. And so I think that's where he is because he's saying he has your clear base coat. Yep, which is good. And you can use that for the, I mean, we're using the clear base coat right now with the candies in it. So we have a candy concentrate. It's, it's, it's uh, like a Kool-Aid packet, you know, of concentration. And you need to um, reduce it down or reducing it down is really not the, the term, but you need to, um, you need to make it less potent and then reduce it down with urethane reducer to make it sprayable. All right. So we have the orange and so let's go ahead and we will clean this guy out. Okay, we're going to go with the white base coat now. That seems to be flowing out pretty good. Okay, I think I have a stencil over there, Ash. Let's... We're playing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, I got this cool air tool stencil, flame stencil. And we'll just use that to make um, just some kind of a, you know, the flame edges, the flame licks on here. Aim for the stencil right here, and we're just going to kind of fade off the edge. We're just going to do it here and there. Use different. different sides kind of just like that that looks good we'll connect these together in just a second Kind of time we running out right now see if we're gonna do that gold tooth or not oh yeah we're gonna do the tooth i think highlight the top of this skull right here maybe even bring a little bit of the fire there we go up over the top looks like it's kind of rolling over once again we want that to be pretty bright highlight in there just a little bit like it's glowing Maybe we'll use the stencil here and there. Maybe bring some flames up. Kind of make it look a little transparent. There we go. Not too much. And we're going to come and just kind of connect these together. See how I kind of connected that right there? Right here, we'll do the same thing. It doesn't really go to anything, but we're just going to kind of run that through there. Getting real close. Maybe we'll run this one and oh, oh, sorry about that. Highlight around these again. We want those to be really bright.
a little bit more here and there just to create a little more depth a little more of the top okay we're gonna go ahead and hit this thing with some red All right, we got some candy red ready to go. Yeah, it does. Oh, okay. So once again, I'm just gonna hit this in the darker areas. I mean, real careful not to just spray it over everything because it's gonna, it's gonna it'll, it'll darken everything up and you'll lose all your detail. The flames you don't have to be so careful with. I mean, you're going to want to hit like inside the holes where it's darker on this outside area. You're going to want to kind of saturate that so it kind of gives it that red uh, kind of a tint to it. Everywhere where it's shadowed here, drown that all in there. All this black outside of here can have that little bit of candy. All right, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and throw some orange back up in here. Actually, maybe let's go with some. So we'll just probably just go with the gold. Let's see what that looks like. Gold? Yeah, the yellow. Well, the yellow. Yellow, gold. Yeah. I'm going to hit those areas back up there. The gold's gonna kind of give the red um, an orange tint, anyways. You see that kind of. So the first yellow you use? Well, I use yeah. It's the, it's the first yellow. I do call yellow gold. Same color. All right. Maybe I'll give it one final highlight around these. Um, I feel like around these razors, razor wire. You can use just a final highlight and then a little more gold. And I think we may pull this. See what we can do maybe about that gold tooth. I don't know if that's going to look right, but we're going to give it a shot. Gonna hit this here and there just once again. Not in the same areas, but this kind of gives it some backlighting there 
Kind of do the same thing. Right there. You can see we're using this stencil multiple times, kind of just honing things in. You can definitely go through here. You can put more drop shadows. You can even do, um, you can do a lot more to this thing if you wanted to. Once this gets cleared, you're going to see that a lot of these candies are going to pop. Look great. Where's my, there it is. All right, it's going to finalize a few areas here. little bit you know what we'll do we'll probably just take let's try something here there we go yeah I like that okay that looks good a little more of the yellow All right, we can go in there with some black right here if we wanted to. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it because I kind of like how it's um, a little bit blended in. Uh, maybe I wouldn't even go all the way black, maybe just with the red with a couple of drops of black in it. Um, we could go in there and hone those in, drop shadows right there, do a little bit more in there, but we're gonna go ahead and leave it. We'll, I think we're gonna be pretty happy with this. Maybe try that tooth here in a second. <laughs> Someone asked, do you like painting panel jobs or portrait type stuff better? Um, well, out of the two, I would rather do panel jobs. Uh, portrait's all right. Um, I would rather be painting like bright mini truck style really is what I want to do, but I can't do that every week. All right, that doesn't look dumb. Last one right here. All right, looking good. Should we try to gold leaf that tooth? What do you think? Yeah. That one right there? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right. That one or the one next to it? On this side. Which one? Which one do you think? You tell me. This one or this one? Or the side one. Side one? Like right here? Yeah, like that one. Like this one? Like this one right here? Yeah. It's like 
Lost his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Get another piece here. I had it upside down. We'll see if this works. Let's try it. I've never gold leaf this part this small before. Wait, what are you doing? Right there. What'd you do? The one off the side, you say. Wait, let me see. Right there, I got taped off. That's the one we're doing. Oh, I meant that one. The one next to the big tooth. This guy. That's okay. Do it. Any of them's going to look fine. Well, I asked you. Said, yeah. I did. Sorry. I wasn't sure where you were at, I guess. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, take this up. All right. Get this airbrush cleaned out. Someone said, would silver look better? Gold or silver? Uh, I think gold, right? We, we were planning on gold, so let's just go with gold. Okay, so we got some the lime line glue. Uh, what am I? I have a brain fart. Sizing glue. Mixed with water. Mixed with water. Very, very light. I guess it don't matter in this, really, because it could have some texture in it. It'll look just fine. It'll look probably even better. Okay, we'll let that dry for a second. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can do copper. Let's do gold because it's brighter. Copper will blend in too much. Just need a little piece of this guy. B. Brown said his daughter Selena could gold leaf it for you. Yeah, I know. I see. I think. I think that's the one I was watching too. I saw something on that. This might look funny because it's too squared off, but maybe not. All right. Here we go. Should we spin it? Roll it and spin it? <laughs> no. We don't need to. I'm pushing down my finger. It's just a tooth. You don't need to roll it? No, you don't need to roll I got my finger Crack on there. It? No. Oh. It's just a little tooth. Mm. I don't know. It's the first time I ever gold leafed a tooth. I don't know. I don't have a clue. I do not know what I'm doing right now. Breaking the rules. Yep. going on here let's oh I gotta pull this one actually oh. well that actually looks cool you gotta have it at the right angle you know but once it's cleared you'll be able to see it better but that actually looks badass I like that 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to clear this right now because I don't want to really want to fume us both out right now. I'll do it tomorrow. And like, once again, I'll have another um, quick video of this, of uh, painting this whole thing, and then I'll have it cleared as well. Uh, so you kind of be able to see this within a two or three minute clip. But yeah, I like that idea. Is the person that, who was the person that said the gold tooth? Brown. Oh, really? Well, if he gets something, right? The last guy did. Yeah, hit me up, E. I'm going to hit me up on Instagram if you're on Instagram. If not, just uh, find me here on YouTube on something, and I'll get your address, and we'll hook you up with some bunch of stuff, kind of like what we did for the last guy. Flake and a hood panel and some tape, some stencils and stuff like that. But, uh, okay, that's it. Hope you guys learned something. Any more questions real quick? Put a diamond in the middle of the tooth. A diamond? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they say it looks good. Awesome job. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. That's it. Okay. Next week, something in the paint booth. Yeah. It's not going to be as exciting, but yep. Sure. Should we do something in the paint booth? Plan hey, on that? Thanks, Rob. Yeah. We can probably plan on something on the paint booth next week. Hey. Okay. All right. Bye, y'all. Night. See ya.